the next presentation is gastric bypass in a patient with unsuspected malrotation of the colon by Drs. Rahima Nenshi and John Hagen at Humbert River Regional Hospital, University of Toronto. Dr. Nenshi will present. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much for the opportunity to present. We can start the video. Excellent. So um, uh, our disclosures are listed on the slide above. This video summarizes a gastric bypass in a patient with unsuspected malrotation of the colon. Congenital rotational GI tract abnormalities occur due to incomplete rotation or non-rotation around the superior mesenteric artery. The most common complication is mid-gut volvulus. The large majority of patients are diagnosed in the first year of life. However, up to 25% may be diagnosed in adulthood. This next figure summarizes the normal rotation of the colon around the superior mesenteric artery, which usually occurs during fetal development. In malrotation, the cecum and the terminal ileum are located in the left upper quadrant and the ligament of trites in the right. In non-rotation, the colon lacks its normal attachments and it lies on the left side of the abdomen and the small bowel mostly on the right. In malrotation, there is a risk of identifying the terminal ileum in the normal anatomical area of the ligament of trites. If this occurs, a Ruron O is constructed with an antiperistaltic biliary limb. This leads to functional obstruction, bilious vomiting, malnutrition, and if unrecognized, eventually death. Our case is that of a 21-year-old female who presented with a BMI of 60.9 for a laparoscopic gastric bypass. She had no known previous medical history. We began our procedure um, looking for the ligament traits in the left upper quadrant. We then identified what looked like the sail on the terminal ileum. With further exploration in the left upper quadrant, we then identified the appendix, which confirmed the rotational abnormality. To clearly identify the anatomy, we decided to run the small bowel starting from the terminal ileum, which was located in the left upper quadrant. This led us to identify the ligament of trites in the right upper quadrant. As we felt that we had confirmed the anatomy, we then measured 50 centimeters from this point and the small bowel was then divided in the routine fashion. We then proceeded with our creation of the enteroenterostomy which was then sutured closed. We then proceeded with the creation of the gastric pouch. And following this, our gastric bypass procedure was completed with the creation of the gastrojejunostomy in the routine fashion.
We then proceeded to identify enclosed Peterson space. We do not routinely do this at our institution, but we felt in this scenario there was a predisposition to internal herniation. We then confirmed that Peterson space was in fact closed. In summary, we felt that it is important to always clearly identify the ligament of trites in order to av avoid construction of a Rouen-O. Specifically in the setting of malrotation or non-rotation, we thought it was helpful to run the small bowel starting at the terminal ileum. And we also thought it was important to close Peterson space to prevent internal herniation. Interestingly, five months following the procedure, following the bypass, our patient presented to the emergency department with crampy abdominal pain. She had lost approximately 70 pounds. We were highly suspicious of an internal hernia and she was therefore taken to the OR. We were quickly able to identify a dilated gastric remnant which confirmed our suspicion of obstruction. We then identified an internal hernia through Peterson space. The small bowel was then reduced and Peterson space was sutured closed. Postoperatively, our patient did quite well and had an uncomplicated course. She was restarted on oral intake and discharged home on postoperative day one. Thank you, and I'm happy to take any questions. Yes, sir. Abdera uh, Mary Abu Dhabi. Thank you for a nice video. Did you close the JJ defect in the first case? And the second question is, did you uh, do an appendectomy? So um, the, the first question, which is about closing the space, we closed Peterson space. Um, we actually discussed it because in our um, institution, we don't routinely close Peterson space. Um, and the, we elected to close it because of uh, the specific scenario of malrotation. The question of the appendectomy is interesting and we definitely discussed it quite extensively during the operation. We elected not to complete an appendectomy for three specific reasons. Number one, we didn't want to add any additional morbidity to the case for this specific patient uh, who is uh, super obese. Secondly, in our specific patient population, the large majority of patients continue with close follow-up at our own site, and we thought that since we had documented her abnormality, if she had any issues, she would return to us for care. And finally, we discussed the finding with the patient and, and her post-operative uh, day one. And we also advised her to wear a medic alert bracelet about her anatomical abnormality. And therefore, we thought we had covered our bases should she run into any further problems. Yeah, if I may just follow up, uh, how about the JJ defect? And it's been described that patients with malrotation because the appendix is in a different location, when they come back with pain, it's not going to be uh, very typical. So most, most people would remove the appendix. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we did not. Uh, we, we discussed it, but we elected not to perform the appendectomy. Yes, sir. Hi, Hi, Frank Borreo from New Jersey. We've seen when we have dilated uh, biliopancreatic limbs and remnants, usually I place a gastrostomy tube because of the atony that occurs after. What's your indication for a gastrostomy tube insertion? Um, in this specific case, we didn't discuss a gastrostomy tube insertion. Um, we didn't expect that she would have any issues with her bypass procedure because we had identified the anatomy. Um, 
I personally am I'm one of the residents. We haven't done any gastrostomy tube insertions in the bypasses that I've been at, so I can't comment on the extent of the indications in this, in this, this specific situation. Thank you. Can you, can you comment on the trocar position? Did you have to add any trocars uh, since now the anastomosis is really on the right upper quadrant? Sure. Um, actually, we didn't have to add any additional uh, trocars, and we found that we were able to do it. They weren't too far apart, uh, and so we were able to do it with our normal trocar positioning. Do you normally do the procedure in between the legs? Um, we do it standing on the left side of the patient, and so we were able to do it like that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.